Hey everyone. I want to talk about yesterday. Still kind of reeling from it. Um, I, I'd like to hear your thoughts. I, I know I just went live and people are going to be coming in slowly uh, just without warning. And so put me on 2x speed if you're watching later uh, for a little bit or whatever. Um, I'm going to try to pull up. I've got a little bit of time here to talk about this. Hey, Phoenix, how's it going, buddy? You were there yesterday. What was the strangest thing? Let me just show. What was the strangest thing or most important thing you'd like to share about yesterday, what you learned? Hey, Cisco kid, good to see you. Seriously. Um, so I'm, I want to pull up the stuff about Johnny Messer is what blew my mind the most. Precocent, good to see you. Hello. Anne Marie, welcome. Hi, Alicia. Are there two separate videos of kidnapping? That's a great question. Um, I think there's just the one, and I think they're the same thing if I'm getting it right. But maybe uh, I'm wrong. Um, maybe they were talking about the same thing. The kidnap video, right. So Johnny Messer supposedly had a kidnap video on his phone. Let me um, – so Carbun uh, is a channel here on YouTube. They're great. They do good things. They had found the search warrant, okay? And I'm going to airdrop these to my phone, and then we'll take a look at it. Or uh, airdrop them to my laptop here. To do I've got to turn on Wi-Fi. Sorry, I just unprepared. I just had time, and I, you know, during my lunch break, and I just wanted to talk with you guys. So there's that. Air dropping now. So my biggest concern is they they couldn't figure out who. I couldn't figure out who <laughs> who it was in the video, so they just didn't do anything about it. Um, that's that sucks. Ultimately, shut this off. Let me do this and this. Open with preview. We'll get this full screen. And present my screen here. So there were a lot of strange things. Okay, yeah, I mean, fair. Hi, Casey, good to see you. Wiener seemed to be text messages. <laughs> What an unfortunate nickname. You know what I mean? We'll get there. Um, let's see if we can do this better. Good morning. Good after Mad Mods for you. Golden says, do you know what time frame the video is from? So this looks like 2019. Um is when this search warrant, let me zoom in. Oh, weird. So, it would make sense that it's in that, in 2019 is when they investigated this. Um, so one of the strange things that Phoenix thought about yesterday is Hennessy questioning Ben Rector, asking him, 
how he was different than Jerry Holman and him replying that he speaks to the facts and the whole court gasping and looking at Jerry, number one. Oof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I wish I would have been there for some of that. That's, yeah. What is this place? I don't know. Okay, Phoenix is clarifying. Bob misspoke. There was a kidnapping, but they didn't say it was a girl. Yeah, and we'll we'll learn a little bit more of that. High reliable evidence. I'm trying to get better at interacting with you guys. I I, I there's so many other channels that are so much better at that. But okay, let's read this. This is in the Rush Superior Court to members of law enforcement. You are authorized and ordered in the name of the state of Indiana with the necessary and proper assistance to enter into or upon the property located at the Rushville Police Department as described as follows. A blue Samsung Galaxy J1 cell phone with the IMEI belonging to Johnny Messer and there diligently search for, seize, and analyze data that may be stored within the cellular telephone's contact list. Incoming and outgoing call history, incoming and outgoing text message history, photo gallery, notes, and any and all areas where digital ma media may be stored. Uh, that's just a quick photo of who we're talking about here, Johnny Messer. Um, it was put on Facebook today. Um, whoops. Let's zoom, 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 and here's the second part of that. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Here's the... I don't know why they're out of order, but we'll we'll be okay. Again, this is something that Carbon... Uh, this was part of the search warrant of Johnny Messer's cell phone. The undersigned who executed the, uh, executed the above search warrant now reports that the following items were seized in accordance with the above search warrant. Forensic examination report detailing digital media stored within cell phone in accordance with search warrant. Okay. And this morning, Kara Wynicki, um, who assisted the defense with the, um, as far as I understand, ooh, this is not high quality, but that's all right. We can still read it. Uh, with the Scion stuff, um, Kara Wynicki is a badass and uh that's all you need to know about that but follow her on twitter she's very knowledgeable so okay this isn't the affidavit of probable cause in support of the search warrant and she posted that this morning i want to say hi real quick before we get too far weird way to ask for a video yeah i mean messer could be young as sketch um hi rebecca ann your calmness is much needed and appreciated. Thank you. Hey, Wayward. Welcome. I think it proves at least one suspect in the Odinist angle is capable of kidnapping and criminal. So that's, I guess that's my whole point. I guess that's my whole point with talking about this stuff. Because it's getting weirder and weirder. Okay? I'm not for or against any suspect... Uh, uh, I personally don't believe Richard Allen did this. With more evidence, my mind could be changed. Um, with better clarification of a lot of things, my mind could be changed. But, um, you know, there's been several suspects that look good for this. I mean, the fact that there was a serial killer on Ron Logan's property... Um, Garrett Kurtz, you know, there's there's a lot of weird coincidences, and I can see why it's been weird and difficult to weed out some things. But to me, not not Todd Click yesterday in front of the court stated that when he saw now I might get this a little wrong wording or whatever, but I'm just paraphrasing, stated that when Todd Click saw the search warrant affidavit for Richard Allen, 
he thought it was weak and he couldn't believe how weak it was in comparison to how strong the the work they did todd click and others on this odin angle now i hate calling it the odin angle i i i don't you know first off paganism isn't odinism odinism is has been hijacked by it is pagan in the truest sense of the word okay hold on pagan means not christian it's as simple as that odinism pagans are very like the majority you know of pagans are like very kind loving earth loving people who who are just at peace in the world and it's very accepting and they don't kill animals they don't sacrifice things um and uh so then there's this white supremacist hijacking of Odinism and because it's they consider it the most pure religion um, that supports their ideology, okay? So Odinists aren't even evil in a sense. Uh, but even taking that a step further, even if you a person is a white supremacist and an Odinist and a pagan, it doesn't mean they're murderers but there are people who are all of those things okay so we kind of need to reel in some of these ideas um it's not satanic ritual or whatever now if these killers thought it was some kind of ritual and in the other bombshell from yesterday is that it was explained that the reason Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall had a fallout at a ritual by a river or, or creek or whatever is because Patrick Westfall wanted to move up from sacrificing animals, which is only one, there's only one category higher than that, and that's sacrificing humans, okay? And that is disturbing on every level. So it kind of adds to this interesting stuff with the, we, I keep calling it the Odinists, but it just is what it is. And um, this is where we are. I, it's convincing me because it gets weirder and weirder. And we have the three cell phones that were out there. Now, I don't know if those are connected in any way. Say it. What am I saying? Anything that's against Jesus Christ is antichrist, a.k.a. satanic. Nah. Um, okay, let's go back to this. Comes now your affiant Major Todd A. Click being duly sworn upon his oath as a police officer with the Rushville Police Department swears and or affirms that the following statement is true. One, I have been employed as a police officer with the Rushville Police Department since May 2001. Two, I currently serve as assistant chief of police and hold the rank of major where I'm responsible for supervising major criminal investigations. And I have served in this capacity since January 1st, 2012. Three. I have extensive training and experience conducting major criminal investigations. I served as detective for the Rushville Police Department from August 2008 until December 31st, 2011. Four, in August 2018, I began providing investigative assistance to investigators working with the double homicide of Abby and Libby in Delphi, Indiana. During the course of this investigation, I learned that Johnny Messer and Eric Basham were involved in a kidnapping that occurred in Indianapolis, Indiana. I had spoken with Taylor Hornady, Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend. Taylor told me that Johnny Messer and Eric Basham had gone to Indianapolis on December 29th, 2017 to purchase methamphetamine. So early on, this reminds me of the drug rumors early on. Okay, so I, I mean, take that as you will, but it's a weird parallel in some ways. Um... So Taylor told me that Johnny had been in contact with a guy she thought was named Mike. Taylor told me that Johnny Messer and Eric Basham met with Mike and gave him $4,000 to purchase methamphetamine. 
Taylor told me that Mike failed to return to where Johnny Messer and Eric Basham were, and Mike had essentially stole their $4,000. Taylor told me that Johnny Messer kidnapped a friend of Mike. Taylor told me that the friend went by the street name of Wiener. Taylor told me that Johnny Messer kidnapped Wiener at gunpoint until he either got his fourth. I'm going to be saying Wiener a lot, um, I guess. It is what it is. Taylor told me that Johnny Messer kidnapped Wiener at gunpoint until he either got his $4,000 back or he got $4,000 worth of methamphetamine. Taylor told me that she had previously installed a spyware program on Johnny Messer's cell phone that allowed her to listen to Johnny's surroundings through the speaker on his cell phone. Taylor told me that she was listening to the kidnapping as it was happening. Taylor told me that she could hear Wiener begging Johnny Messer not to kill him. In November 2018, a search warrant was obtained through Vigo County, Indiana for Taylor Hornaday's cell phone. This search warrant was in conjunction with the Delphi double homicide investigation. During the search of Taylor Hornady's cell phone, recordings of Johnny Messer's cell phone calls were found. One of these, one of those recordings was of Johnny Messer talking to someone regarding the theft of his $4,000. The phone call recording corroborated Taylor's report of the kidnapping in Indianapolis. On January 15th, 2019, Todd Click went to Putnam Correctional Facility and interviewed Eric Basham. Eric Basham confirmed that the kidnapping took place. Eric Basham told me that he had recently gotten a large monetary settlement. Eric Basham told me that he and Johnny Messer had gone to Indianapolis to purchase $4,000 worth of methamphetamine. Eric Basham told me that he and Johnny Messer made contact with one of Johnny's connections. Eric Basham told me that he gave Johnny's connection $4,000 and this guy was supposed to come back and give them $4,000 worth of methamphetamine. <sighs> Eric Basham told me that this guy stole his money. Eric Basham told me that Johnny Messer grabbed this guy's friend, Wiener, at gunpoint and put him in the truck. Eric Basham told me that John, I am a child, I guess. I can't read this with a straight face, but let's keep going. So Eric Basham told Todd Click that Johnny, uh, that Johnny Messer grabbed this guy's friend, whose name is Wiener, at gunpoint and put him in the truck. Eric Basham told me that Johnny Messer had a 380 handgun, but that didn't have any bullets for the gun. Eric Basham told me that Johnny was trying to use Wiener as leverage Damn it. To either get the $4,000 back or get their method food. I mean, this isn't funny, but it's, I hate it. I hate this. Eric Basham told me that he tried to convince Johnny Messer several times to let this guy go, but Johnny refused. Eric Basham told me that Wiener was able to find them a supplier for $4,000 worth of methamphetamine. Eric Basham told me that Johnny Messer released Wiener once. Okay, I'm apparently not mature enough to read this. I apologize. <laughs> January. So they kidnapped a guy. Um, it was about drugs. And uh, so, so he has a history of kidnapping with a gun. And I think that's really the point of showing this. Um, let me continue. On January 28th, 2019, I was contacted by Taylor Hornaday. Taylor told me that she was cleaning her house today and found an old cell phone. Taylor told me that she thought this cell phone belonged to her ex-boyfriend, Johnny Messer. Taylor told me that she entered the cell phone and confirmed that the cell phone belonged to Johnny Messer. Taylor told me that she also found text messages in the phone regarding Johnny's involvement in the kidnapping that occurred in Indianapolis. I have probable cause to believe that evidence of the crime of kidnapping may be stored within the cellular telephone that is described as blue Samsung Galaxy JL cell phone belonging to Johnny Messer. I respectfully request that a search warrant be issued to search for, seize, and analyze data that may be stored within the cellular telephone's contact list, incoming, blah, 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 same stuff, okay? So, now I want to pull up the search warrant affidavit. 
Gambies is here. Think, you know, we only know what we know because of Gambies amazing note taking. We're so appreciative of her. Go watch the unravelings live last night so that you can uh, hear all of it. Um, it's uh, I'm miss I'm forgetting some things. Okay. And it's, it really was a crazy day. I don't know if you saw the Kung Fu fighting video also, just as a side note. That's pretty good. You guys should go watch that. Anyway, I now want to, I'm uh, the Frank's memorandum and we're going to search for Johnny Messer because there's, there's some stuff in there that's very concerning. Um, and I don't think it's really been discussed that much. Um, I sure haven't. But now that we know more and that there's more weird stuff to consider, we have to now include that into our uh, considerations. So here we go. Let me get this ready. And oh, that's interesting. It's still working on it. Okay. Okay. Hello, everybody that's come in. Sorry if I haven't said, I'm kind of on my rant right now in my discussion. Um, all right, let's go back to this. Oop, there we go. Let me go up and just take a minute here. That's fair. There's nothing wrong with that. Hi, Alicia. Amber. Viking culture has been appropriate. Yes, absolutely. Hey, Mother of Dragons. Good to see you. Anne Marie. Awesome. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes, precisely. So what's funny about this, uh, welcome Alco, by the way, is that none of that stuff actually even made it into the attention of what was going on. Judge Gull didn't give two shits about what these dumbass YouTubers were emailing her. And that's it. That's the story. I wish. I Tyler Childers is amazing. All right. FOIA for the whole transcript. Could there be a... That's a good question. I don't know. I imagine they'll never see the light of day. But we'll uh, we'll try to keep a positive outlook about that. So Phoenix, I don't think it's weird at all. This story actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I agree. Um, one thing, it's not that I'm trying to sway people. I'm trying to bring people to reason. So it, it, this case has become like religion to people where Richard Allen did it and that's it. And if you say anything that challenges that at all, you're wrong and you're the enemy. And then they dox you, they attack you. Um, 
I think a lot of that stuff is done to shy away from people's own things they've done wrong, but whatever. You know, ultimately, it doesn't matter. Um, although, if somebody gets hurt, like Kyle Fortson taking his own life, there's several people to blame for that and what happened there. And that will weigh heavy on them for a long time. And I hope it does. Um, it can go real life. You know, you get information and you want to share it between people you think you trust. And then they share it between people they think they can trust. And it's fine, usually. Um, but it can end in tragedy uh, also. And I, I wish we had never heard about these photos or leaks. Um, my, one of my best friends in high school and middle school, yeah, um, he served. So I went to high school with Mitch Westerman and one, he's not my, like, I didn't really know Mitch. Uh, we were just, I was like a band nerd and he was like a basketball player. Um, but, uh, you know, we, whatever. We, our graduating class was like 125 people. So, I mean, we knew each other, but not really hung out or anything. But, but Kyle Fortson served with Mitch and my childhood best friend, one of my best friends. And um, it's, it's just super tragic seeing my friend in that much pain over his friend uh, not being around anymore. And then I can't even imagine his own daughter and his wife over something so stupid and the intimidations, which were outright lies by Holman, honestly. And uh, it's horrific. So when people are trying to call people's jobs and, and uh, wives and uh, take, like, how far is too far? Don't become a monster to fight your enemies. It's like, that's Nietzschean, right? Uh, but just Jesus Christ, there's so many monsters in this case, so many, and all of them think they are right and that they are fighting for the right cause. That's insane to me. So it, to me, back to Phoenix's comment here, I don't think it's weird at all either because the evidence, there are stronger evidence towards this stuff than there is towards Alan, in my opinion. And, you know, we're all biased to some degree. I don't have no reason at all to think, to form the opinion that I don't think Richard Allen is guilty. It's, at, when I first read the probable cause affidavit, I was like, this seems strong. This seems damning. And then we learned more. And then we even learned that the statements in there were not the truth. And then we learned more and more. And so, and then now we're learning more about this stuff. Um, you know, I was starting to lean towards Ron Logan before Richard Allen was arrested. And as a juxtaposition, honestly, like uh, the Idaho 4 case, okay, all the evidence in my mind points to Brian Koberger being guilty. I think he's guilty. If I was on a jury, you know, I would have to weigh the evidence, of course. But I'm at this moment convinced Brian Koberger, like as soon as they said his DNA or uh, was on the sheath, you know, on the bed, like that's it. He did it. And all the, their PCA was extremely strong. They tracked all his movements um uh, case closed in my mind but where with the delphi case i don't feel that way so i'm trying to appeal to people's curiosity and reason which is very rare in this case for some reason but anyway yes but wiener nickname apparently i'm a child 
All right, let's go back to this. Let's check this out. So I'll do Command F. We will search for Messer. Okay. And on the left there, we're getting all of the times Messer shows up. So unified commands failure to vigorously pursue the obvious links between... This is in the introduction. Let's skip the introduction. Well, we probably shouldn't. Okay. This is basically saying that they feel this Odinist angle is really what's what where they should have put their time instead of their client Richard Allen. Um, and so it's just saying the Odinism, these Odinists, these specific people. Brad Holder, I don't think Brad Holder's involved, but he knew about it, potentially. Like, this is just my current theory, and I can change it any time. I don't think Brad Holder was involved, but I think Pat did tell him, or at least alluded to it, and then he maybe started putting hints on his Facebook page, okay? Maybe. I could be completely wrong on that. He could have been there, fake clock ins and clock outs, all that stuff. But anyway, so Brad Holder, Elvis Fields, Patrick Westfall, Johnny Messer, and Rod Abrams. So it's just summarizing. So again, talking about unified commands, failure to continually pursue the obvious links between the crime scene and Odinism is even more disturbing when evidence known to law enforcement included information about an, another Odinite named Johnny Messer from Rushville. Johnny was a recruiter for the Odinites and was also the connective tissue between the Odinites from Delphi area. So um, something else that came out yesterday and helped me hear Gambies or Phoenix was that Johnny Messer they were able to link Johnny and Elvis because uh, I forget the link, something about a dad lived with him or something like that. If you could help me clarify, that'd be amazing. Um, his uncle lived there. Okay. So Johnny was a recruiter for the Odinists and was also the connective tissue between the Odinists from Delphi and Rushville. Law enforcement knew Johnny Messer was friends with Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall. Law enforcement also knew that Messer was acquaintances with Elvis Fields and Rod Abrams. Unified Command theoretically could claim and actually appear to be claiming that this connection is simply a bizarre coincidence. Yeah, it's not. Not at all. We know that. Okay. Um, so now we get into here. Johnny's ex-girlfriend, Taylor Hornaday, told police that Johnny Messer and Patrick Westfall were like brothers. She also told police that she had allowed Johnny to borrow her car on or around Valentine's Day in 2017 and that Johnny drove her car up there to hang with his Vinlander friends. When he returned her vehicle, it had dried blood over one side of it. Johnny Messer refused to discuss the details of how the blood got there. Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend further stated that it took her several car washes to finally remove the blood. Objection. <laughs> My God, did they ever test that car inside and out for DNA. Please tell me they did. I already know the answer. They did not. Uh, I don't know that for certain. I'm just saying. I doubt they did. But I hope they did. Did they track it down and test it? Messer's ex-girlfriend also told law enforcement that Brad Holder and Johnny Messer were two of the most violent people she knew and were fully capable of having been involved in the murders. 
further stated that a motive of their involvement in the murder of Abby and Libby might be the concept of blood in and blood out, which means social acceptance into their circles, secret circles. So if Holder and Westfall had a tiff, she's implying that maybe these murders were Holder's blood out to get out of the inner circles of the Vinlanders, American Guard, uh, Odinist stuff. Okay. So additionally, Unified Command learned that Johnny Messer's ex-girlfriend had been listening to and recording Johnny Messer's phone calls. We saw this before when we were talking about the other stuff. Please secure the phone and listen to three phone calls involving... This is the Frank's memorandum, just to remind you. The phone calls involving Johnny Messer. In two of those phone calls, Messer was offering money to other people to find someone so they can be injured or killed. The third car, call involves Messer bragging about holding a subject hostage and shooting them at his house. So not only did they have evidence of probably this person being kidnapped by gun, but he also shot them or said he did shot them at his house. Was any of this, regardless of the Delphi case, was any of this investigated? Okay. Um, here is a list of facts, you know, that unify. <laughs> Basically, this is a list of what Unified Command tried or ignored outright. Okay. A lot of this goes over what we already talked about. Johnny Messer was from Rushville, uh, Brad Holder from Logan Sport, Patrick Westfall, Delphi. So if Messer was going up there, he was definitely headed towards Delphi and Logan Sport. So up there is that area. Johnny was a recruiter for the Vinlander gang. Remember Elvis talked about being part of a gang now? when he admitted his involvement in these murders to his, both of his sisters. Yeah. Also, that same summer of 2016, Elvis Fields was already mimicking and recreating Brad Holder's Facebook posts. This fact would provide evidence that Johnny Messer had already recruited Elvis Fields and introduced him to Brad Holder and that Elvis was now following the group's leader, Brad Holder, on Facebook and that Elvis was also emulating Holder. I would say Brian James is actually the leader, but he's the leader of the American Guard and Ben Lunders, or was at the time. Supposedly he's reformed. But anyway. Um, let's go to the next page. The recruiter Johnny Messer admitted in his October 23rd, 2018 videotaped interview that Rod Abrams, Ned Smith, and Elvis were all interested in joining the same club that Messer and Holder were involved in. But Messer claimed that he did not think Vinlanders would be interested in them. Messer's comment appears as a self-serving attempt to distance himself from being the person that contacted Holder with Elvis in light of the fact that Doogie, Dougie, a man who was mentally infirm had been affiliated with the club. See footnote 102. So Odin Report part, page 5, Taylor Hornaday describes how Brad Holder and Patrick Westfall took advantage of a mentally infirm man by the name of Dougie, asking him to perform menial tasks for them. Also find attached Exhibit 69, which is a summation that appears was prepared by police for a PowerPoint presentation that also discusses lower functioning Dougie being used by Holder and Messer as a gopher. So they had a, there's a history of using not the smartest people.
Yeah. I mean, uh, Mel, didn't, didn't the American Guard have a person in as their head basically to say, hey, look, we're not racist? Wasn't there something strange about that? Um, hey, Kelly. I'm a big fan of Grizzly. She's the she's amazing. I'm a Grizzly myself. So to do the Dougie. <laughs> All right. I think that really kind of the big thing is like there's blood on his car around Valentine's Day in 2017. You know, we have Elvis Fields and now more Johnny Messer information. Oh, and uh, apparently there's 70, was it 70 additional days worth of deleted interviews? They lost like a couple months worth. Of recorded interviews that's horrifying I'm I uh, what is it JCS I like to watch a lot of those uh, interrogation videos I just can't imagine in a case like this Losing all of that val invaluable data. Like, uh, and even, even the recording, like that Dan Doolin supposedly couldn't find of Richard Allen. All they had to do was ask for help. Seriously. Yeah. Is it malice or is it stupidity? Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. And I hope it's stupidity and not malice. But a small town has its own dark secrets. Is this all drug related? Would drug things or, or cults lead back to important people in that town? Um, these are, you know, I see people exploring these ideas, and at this point, nothing is really off the table, per se. It's so strange. I, I've never seen a case like this, n nor an investigation like this either. And, um, man, I don't know. Let me see what you guys think. Stuff that's missing is very calculated and related. I hope that can be proven. I hope some of these wrongs can be righted. I hope there's justice. There's a lot of people... Well, there's a lot of people who blindly believe whatever law enforcement says. I sure don't. They've proven all law enforcement across the board over the past 10, 15 years, 20 years even has proven themselves not great in any way. Um, a true reformation would be psych evals, um, actual training regularly, uh, education requirements, um, proper funding to prevent, uh, uh, you know, Dirty cops, like pay them well, give them proper equipment, have proper checks and balances, provide proper mental health, you know, 
you can't it, it's like uh i had a friend who was in the 82nd airborne you know at any moment he would be flown across the world dropped right into battle and had to kill his way out he got blown up twice um and on a second time it uh, messed up his spinal cord and they just dropped him back off in lafayette gave him some drugs said have at it our government doesn't give a fuck about anybody And so it's going to be rare. We have psychopaths, psychopathy, like one in 25 people. It is thought one in like 4% of the population can't feel emotion at all. That doesn't mean they're serial killers or whatever. But there, there's a high number of people who are kind of sadistic and and we see it in the true crime community. That's the scariest part. We just want to make videos. And there are psychopaths who work behind the scenes to manipulate and control and fuck with creators. And it's so weird. Um, and some of the better ones get full armies behind them. Like, what is this crap? <laughs> well, it's psychopathy. Um it's prevalent. Cops, a lot of cops are psychopaths because it's power. If you're attracted to power, it's a good thing. Military, you know, if you want to be able to kill people without getting in trouble, you become a cop. You, you go into the military. Um, so there are some great cops out there. I'm not saying all cops are bad, but kind of. I'm kind of a cab, honestly. Not completely, but kind of. And uh, I'm just saying that because this isn't a good look. If you want to change that view, then more people need to do their due diligence better. I hate seeing this affect a case we all love and want to see real resolution and, and real justice. And just day after day after day, it seems worse and worse and worse. So, aw, thank you so very much. I was advised by an attorney that works between Tiffany County and Boone, where I am not to show up to Carroll County for the trial. It's going to be a manhunt, basically. I'm not surprised. So... I got a, my lunch break is almost over here. I appreciate all of you. I appreciate you. Even if you don't agree with me, when you can come in and peaceably say things or, or post your points. Um, one of my best friends, if not my best friend these days, argues with me. We argue daily, but we don't get mad at each other. You can argue every day all day about about stuff and you don't have to like they aren't your nobody's your enemy unless you're like vindictive or whatever i'm just saying we can still be good people and not agree on things you guys are awesome that's just a man rambling i'm just some dude rambling on the internet but i appreciate you guys all right have a good rest of your day